Thus have I heard. At one time, the Bhagavan was wandering through Kashala with a great Sangha of bhikshus, together with five hundred bhikshus, when he arrived at the market town of Marikaranda in Kashala, where he stayed in a certain forest grove. Then, indeed, in the evening, after arising from his rest, the Bhagavan left the dwelling, looked upwards, scanned the directions, looked downwards, and surveyed the level ground, then produced a smile and walked a long walk. Thereupon, the venerable Ananda, having seen the Bhagavan at evening time, after arising from his rest, looking upwards, scanning the directions, looking downwards, and surveying the level ground, and having produced a smile, walking a long walk, approached where many bhikshus were gathered and spoke to the bhikshus thus. This Buddha, the Bhagavan, after arising in the evening, looks upwards, scans the directions, looks downwards, surveys the level ground, produces a smile, and walks a long walk. Yet, surely, the Tathagatas, the Arhats, the perfectly awakened ones, do not smile without cause and without condition. What then, do we, who are far less, do by approaching the Bhagavan and asking him about this matter? According to how the Bhagavan will explain it, thus we shall uphold it. Very well, Venerable One. Those bhikshus responded to Venerable Ananda. Then indeed, the Venerable Ananda, along with those bhikshus, approached the Bhagavan, touched the Bhagavan's feet with his head, and stood aside. Standing aside, the Venerable Ananda said to the Bhagavan, Here I see the Bhagavan, after arising in the evening and leaving the dwelling, looking upwards and downwards, scanning the directions, surveying the level ground, and smiling, walking a long walk. Yet the Tathagatas, the Arhats, the perfectly awakened ones, do not smile without a cause or condition. What, Bhagavan, is the reason and condition for this smile? When this was said, the Bhagavan said to the Venerable Ananda, Do you see this region of earth, Ananda? Yes, Bhagavan, he replied. In this region, Ananda, was the former dwelling place of the Bhagavan Kashyapa. Do you see this region of earth, Ananda? Yes, Bhagavan, he replied. In this region was the hut of the Bhagavan Kashyapa. Do you see this region of earth, Ananda? Yes, Bhagavan, he replied. In this region was the walking place of the Bhagavan Kashyapa. Do you see this region of earth, Ananda? Yes, Bhagavan, he replied. In this region was the seat of the three Tathagatas, the Arhats, the perfectly awakened ones. Bhagavan Krakachanda, Bhagavan Kanakamuni, and Bhagavan Kashyapa. Then, filled with wonder and awe, his hairs standing on end, the Venerable Ananda quickly hurried to that region of earth, arranged a fourfold robe as a seat, and bowing with joined palms before the Bhagavan, he said, Here, Bhagavan, please sit, the seat is prepared. This region of earth will be used by the four Tathagatas, the Arhats, the perfectly awakened ones, by Bhagavan Krakachanda, by Bhagavan Kanakamuni, by Bhagavan Kashyapa, and now by you. Please sit, Bhagavan, the seat is prepared. The Venerable Ananda then worshipped the Bhagavan's feet with his head and sat aside. Those bhikshus too worshipped the Bhagavan's feet with their heads and sat aside. Sitting aside, the Bhagavan said to the Venerable Ananda, Do you wish again to hear the Dermic discourse related to the former lives of the Tathagata, starting from this very Marikaranda market town? When this was said, the Venerable Ananda said to the Bhagavan, Now is the time, Bhagavan, now is the auspicious moment for the Bhagavan to speak this matter to the bhikshus. The bhikshus, hearing it directly from the Bhagavan, will grasp it directly and uphold the truth. When this was said, the Bhagavan said to the Venerable Ananda, Formerly, Ananda, during the time of the Bhagavan Kashyapa, this Marikaranda market town was a Brahmin village called Verudinga. In the Veradinga Brahmin village, there was a potter named Gadakara who was the attendant of the Bhagavan Kashyapa. Gadakara the potter had a young friend named Jayotipala, a dear and charming playmate and companion in childhood games, the son of a Brahmin named Ajanya. Then, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa, while wandering through Kashala with a great Sangha of bhikshus, along with seven thousand bhikshus, arrived and stayed in that same forest section in the Verudinga Brahmin village of Kashala. Gadikara the potter heard that the Bhagavan Kashyapa, while wandering through Kashala, had arrived and was staying in another part of the forest in the Verudinga Brahmin village. Then, Gadikara the potter approached Jayotipala the youth and said to him, It is heard, Sami Angiotispala, that the Bhagavan Kashyapa, 
while wandering through Kashala with a great sangha of bhikshus, together with seven thousand bhikshus, has arrived and is staying in another part of the forest in the Viradinga Brahman village. What then, Samyajyotispala, shall we approach the Bhagavan Kashyapa for the purpose of seeing, venerating, and paying homage to him? Upon hearing this, Jayotipala the youth said to Gadikara the potter, What do you mean, Gadikara, that we should approach these shaven-headed ascetics for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? Again, Ananda, Gadikara the potter spoke to Jayotipala the youth. What do you mean, Gadikara, that we should approach these shaven-headed ascetics for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? Then indeed, Ananda, this occurred to Gadikara the potter. What means might there be for Jayotipala the youth to approach the Bhagavan Kashyapa for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? Then indeed, Ananda, this occurred to Gadikara the potter. There is, near this very forest grove, a pond called Sumuka, perhaps I should go there with Jayotipala the youth for a head bath. Then indeed, Ananda, Gadikara the potter, taking Jayotipala the youth, approached the pond called Sumuka for a head bath. After this was said, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth said to Gadikara the potter. Well then, Gadikara, be happy if you now think it is time. Then indeed, Ananda, Gadikara the potter, taking a bathing cloth, along with Jayotipala the youth, approached that pond for bathing. After bathing, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth stood on the water's edge, drying his hair. Then indeed, Ananda, Gadikara the potter said to Jayotipala the youth. Here, Samu Jayatipala, Bhagavan Kishapa is dwelling in this very forest grove. What then, Samu Jayatipala, shall we approach the Bhagavan Kishapa for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? After this was said, Jayotipala the youth said to Gadikara the potter. What do you mean, Gadikara, that we should approach these shaven-headed ascetics for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? Then indeed, Ananda, Gadikara the potter, grabbing Jayotipala the youth by the scruff, said. Here, Sami Jayatipala, Bhagavan Kashyapa is dwelling in this very forest grove. What then, Sami Jayatipala, shall we approach the Bhagavan Kashyapa for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? Then indeed, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth shook off Gadikara the potter and left. Gadikara the potter, following him, grabbed him by the hair on his head and said, Here, Sami Jayatipala, Bhagavan Kashyapa is dwelling in this very forest grove. What then, Sami Jayatipala, shall we approach the Bhagavan Kashyapa for the purpose of seeing and paying homage? Then indeed, Venerable Ananda, this occurred to Jayotipala the youth. Indeed, it is not without reason that Gadikara the potter, after a head bath, touches my head, nudging me, though he is of a lower caste. Well then, Gadikara, be happy if you now think it is time. Then indeed, Ananda, Gadikara the potter, together with Jayotipala the youth, approached the Bhagavan Kashyapa and, having venerated the feet of the Bhagavan Kashyapa, stood aside. Standing aside, Ananda, Gadikara the potter said to the Bhagavan Kashyapa, This is Jayotipala the youth, my childhood friend and playmate, dear and beloved, the son of the Brahmanajanya. Please instruct and admonish him, Bhagavan. Then, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa initiated Jayotipala the youth into the three refuges and the five precepts. After this, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth said to the Bhagavan Kashyapa, I am not yet ready, Bhagavan, to undertake all five precepts. There is still one person, a tormentor, filled with anger, whose life must be ended. Upon hearing this, the Bhagavan Kashyapa said to Jayotipala the youth, Who then, Jayotipala? Is this one person, the tormentor, filled with anger, whose life must be ended? After this was said, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth said to the Bhagavan Kashyapa, This person, Bhagavan, is Gadikara the potter, who even then touched my head with his hands while my head was still wet from bathing. However, at that time, I said, Let us approach the Bhagavan Kashyapa for the purpose of seeing and paying homage. So, may you be happy, Gadikara the potter, Thus I will now undertake all five precepts. Then indeed, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa, through a discourse on the Dharma, demonstrated, initiated, encouraged, and invigorated both Gadikara the potter and Jayotipala the youth. 
After that, Ananda, both Gadakara and Jayotipala the youth, having venerated the feet of the Bhagavan Kashyapa with their heads, departed. Then, not long after departing, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth said to Gadakara the potter. You too, dear Gadakara, understand the true Dharma taught by the Bhagavan Kashyapa, just as I do. Upon hearing this, Gadakara the potter responded to Jayotipala the youth. Indeed, Sami Jayotipala, I too understand the true Dharma taught by the Bhagavan Kashyapa, just as you do. Then, Jayotipala the youth asked Gadakara the potter. Why then, Gadakara, do you not renounce household life to become a homeless wanderer near the Bhagavan Kashyapa? Gadakara the potter replied to Jayotipala the youth. I have elderly and frail parents who are nearly blind, and there is no one else to care for them. That is why I do not renounce household life to become a wanderer near the Bhagavan Kashyapa. After a short time, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth developed a distaste for household life and his mind turned towards renunciation. Then, Ananda, Jayotipala the youth approached Gadakara and said. Come, righteous Gadakara, I resolve to renounce near the Bhagavan Kashyapa and will take up the homeless life. Then, Ananda, Gadakara the potter, taking Jayotipala the youth, approached the Bhagavan Kashyapa, venerated his feet with his head, and stood aside. Standing to one side, Ananda, Gadakara the potter said to the Bhagavan Kashyapa. This is Jayotipala the youth, my childhood friend and playmate, dear and beloved, the son of the Brahmana Janya. May the Bhagavan ordain him and allow him to go forth. Then, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa addressed the bhikshus. Ordain the youth Jayotipala, let him go forth. Following this, Ananda, the bhikshus ordained Jayotipala the youth. Soon after his ordination, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa set out on a wandering tour through Kashala and Kashi with the newly ordained monk Jayotipala. Then, Ananda, as the Bhagavan Kashyapa was wandering in Kashi with a great Sangha of bhikshus, numbering 7,000, he arrived at Varanasi in Kashi and stayed there in the deer park at Rishavadana. It was heard, Ananda, that Kriki, the king of Kashi, learned that the Bhagavan Kashyapa, accompanied by a great Sangha of bhikshus, had arrived in Varanasi and was staying at the deer park at Rishivadana. Then, Ananda, Kriki the king of Kashi sent a man, saying, Go, good man, to where the Bhagavan Kashyapa is, and convey my respects to him. Kriki the king of Kashi expressed his veneration to the feet of the Bhagavan Kashyapa and inquired about his health and comfort, the strength and ease of the community, and invited him for a well-prepared meal along with the Sangha. The Bhagavan Kashyapa accepted the invitation. Upon hearing this, the Bhagavan Kashyapa said to the man, May King Kriki of Kashi be happy, along with his family and retinue. Choose the time as you see fit. Then, knowing the Bhagavan Kashyapa's acceptance, the man returned to Varanasi. Then he approached King Kriki and relayed. O great king, as per your instruction, I conveyed your respects to the Bhagavan Kashyapa. He inquired about minor ailments, minor discomforts, comfort, strength, ease of touch, and has accepted your invitation for a well-prepared meal along with the Sangha, and he agrees to come at the time you consider appropriate. Then, Ananda, that very night, King Kriki prepared an abundant and refined array of edible and consumable items to entertain throughout the night. After the night had passed, he sent another man, saying, Go, good man, to where the Bhagavan Kashyapa is, and tell him, whenever it is suitable for the Bhagavan, please come to King Kriki of Kashi's residence for the meal. The man agreed, saying, Well, great king. And having left the city of Varanasi, he proceeded to where the Bhagavan Kashyapa was staying in the deer park at Rishavadana. Then indeed, Ananda, that man approached the Bhagavan Kashyapa, venerated his feet with his head, and said, It is the appropriate time, Bhagavan, to come to the residence of King Kriki for the meal, whenever you deem fit. Then, having agreed to the man's request, the Bhagavan Kashyapa, dressed in his robe and bowl, accompanied by the Bhikshu Sangha, and leading them, set out for the city of Varanasi. At that time, Ananda, King Kriki of Kashi, surrounded by his princes and ministers, stood at the entrance of his residence, waiting to receive the Bhagavan Kashyapa and his Sangha of disciples. 
King Kriki saw the Bhagavan Kashyapa and the Sangha of disciples approaching from afar. Upon seeing them, he approached the Bhagavan Kashyapa and the Sangha, venerated their feet with his head, and then led them into his residence. During this time, in King Kriki's residence was a newly completed pavilion called Kakanada, which had not yet been used by any Shramana or Brahmin. Then, Ananda, King Kriki said to the Bhagavan Kashyapa, This is the pavilion in my residence, named Koknada, newly completed and not yet used by any Shramana or Brahman. May the Bhagavan be the first to use it. After it has been used by you, we will use it. Upon hearing this, the Bhagavan Kashyapa said to King Kriki, Well then, great king, be happy, choose the time as you see fit. Then King Kriki arranged seats in the Kakanada pavilion and prepared the food offerings. Then, the Bhagavan ascended the Kakanada pavilion, sat on the designated seat as arranged, and the Bhikshu Sangha also took their seats. Then King Kriki personally served and offered food to the Bhagavan Kashyapa and the Sangha, each and every one, with food and meals prepared with the utmost care. Then, Ananda, King Kriki of Kashi, after noticing that the Bhagavan Kashyapa had finished eating, had washed his hands, and had put away his bowl, took a low seat and approached the Bhagavan Kashyapa. He venerated the Bhagavan's feet with his head and then sat down to one side. Sitting there, he said to the Bhagavan Kashyapa, Bhagavan, please consider staying in the city of Varanasi for the rainy season. I will build a monastery here with 7,000 cottages, 7,000 platforms, 7,000 streets, 7,000 stables, and 7,000 caretakers, each to serve the Bhikshu Sangha individually, and they will also serve you, Bhagavan. Upon hearing this, Bhagavan Kashyapa replied to King Kriki, Great King, I am unable to spend the rainy season in the Vaji territory. The same applies to the second and third proposals. Then King Kriki, unable to persuade Bhagavan Kashyapa to stay for the rainy season in Varanasi, wept and shed tears. Thereafter, King Kriki asked the Bhagavan Kashyapa, Is there another supporter like me for the Bhagavan? To which Bhagavan Kashyapa responded, You are indeed an incomplete supporter, great king. King Kriki then asked, Who then, Bhagavan, is a more complete and perfect supporter for you? Great King, in your realm itself, there is a Brahmin village called Verudinga. There, Gatikara is my supporter. What kind of possessions does Gatikara have that he uses to support the Bhagavan and the Sangha? Great King, Gatikara the potter lives a life avoiding the destruction of life, theft, sexual misconduct, lying, intoxicating drinks and drugs, singing, dancing, and playing musical instruments, wearing garlands, using perfumes and colored cosmetics, sleeping on high or luxurious beds, and eating after midday. He also refrains from accepting gold and silver. He does not dig the earth, instead, he uses only the clay that naturally comes to the surface or that is exposed by water or other natural means. He makes pots from this clay and places them at the crossroads. Those who need the pots can fill them with grains such as mung beans, black beans, or rice, and take them away without any expectation of payment. These are the possessions of Gadikara the potter, by which he supports the Tathagata and the Sangha. And he also cares for his elderly and blind parents. At one time, great king, I was residing in the Brahmin village of Verudinga. Having put on my robe and taken my alms bowl early in the morning, I set out for alms in Verudinga. While walking attentively for alms in the Brahmin village of Verudinga, I approached the residence of Gadikara the potter and stood at a designated spot. At that time, Gadikara the potter had just left his home. Then, great king, the parents of Gadikara the potter said to the Tathagata, your supporter, the Bhagavan, has just left. Here, on the upper shelf, there is soup and rice, please, Bhagavan, help yourself. So I, great king, having accepted the soup and rice from the upper shelf as if offered by the deities, consumed it and then departed. Later, great king, when Gadikara the potter returned to his home, he saw that the soup and rice on the upper shelf had been eaten and asked his parents, who has eaten the soup and rice from the upper shelf? 
Upon this, the parents of Gadikara the potter told him, it was eaten by the Bhagavan Kashyapa, your son. Then, great king, this was the realization of Gadikara the potter, again I have gained what is hard to gain, that the Bhagavan Kashyapa, in whom I have utmost trust, has personally accepted my offering. And for half a month thereafter, he experienced joy and happiness that did not leave his body, and for a week, this happiness also encompassed his elderly parents, who were old and had weak eyesight. Once, great king, when the Tathagata was in his hermitage and the roof was not well thatched, it did not gather enough grass. So, I, great king, instructed the bhikshus, go, bhikshus, to the residence of Gadikara the potter and bring grass. Subsequently, those bhikshus approached Gadikara's residence. Around that time, Gadikara had just left his home. They did not see any grass but noticed a new roofing storage house. Then, great king, the bhikshus returned to where the Tathagata was and informed him, your supporter, Gadikara, has left and there is no grass, but there is a new roofing storage house. Upon hearing this, I instructed the bhikshus, go, bhikshus, remove the roofing from Gadikara's new storage house and bring the grass. Thus, the bhikshus went back to Gadikara's residence and removed the roofing from the new storage house. At this point, Gadikara's parents saw them and asked, who is removing the roofing and taking the grass from Gadikara's storage house? When the bhikshus explained that the grass was being taken to where the bhikshus and the Bhagavan Kashyapa were, because grass did not grow at the Tathagata's hermitage, the parents told the bhikshus, take it, take it, it is yours. Later, when Gadikara returned home and saw the roofing removed and the grass taken, he asked his parents, who has removed the roofing and taken the grass from my storage house? His parents explained, the Bhagavan Kashyapa's bhikshus took it because grass does not grow at the Tathagata's hermitage. Upon hearing this, Gadikara felt that he had gained what is hard to gain, that the Bhagavan Kashyapa, in whom he had utmost trust, had personally made use of his offering. This brought him joy and happiness that did not leave his body for a month, and for half a month, this joy was also felt by his blind parents. Furthermore, I do not know of any such sorrow as grievous for Gadikara as the fact that the Bhagavan Kashyapa would not consent to stay in Varanasi for the rainy season, but rather stay with the king. Then, indeed, Ananda, this thought occurred to King Kriki of Kashi. I have again gained a rare fortune, for such a practitioner of the holy life resides within my realm, making the land a field of merit. Thereupon, Ananda, King Kriki of Kashi sent a hundred cartloads of straw and freshly cut rice along with fresh water, oil, salt, and cooked vegetables to Gadikara the potter. Then, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa, having shown King Kriki the Dharma through his teachings, inspired, encouraged, and delighted him, rose from his seat and departed. Then, indeed, Ananda, after the meal, the Bhagavan Kashyapa, having walked with his alms bowl, summoned the bhikshus. Sit down, bhikshus, gather around, bind your sitting mats, for I shall not untie the sitting mat until the minds of these seven thousand bhikshus, seated on these seats, are liberated from the influxes without grasping. Very well, Bhagavan. The bhikshus responded to Bhagavan Kashyapa, and they sat down, gathered around, and bound their sitting mats. At that moment, Ananda, a deep contemplation arose in the mind of Jayotipala the bhikshu, who was in solitude and withdrawn. Oh, may I in future journeys become a Tathagata, an Arhat, a fully awakened one, endowed with wisdom and conduct, well gone, a knower of the worlds, unsurpassed, a tamer of persons to be tamed, a teacher of gods and humans. And having recognized this world with its gods, Maras, Brahmas, beings comprising recluses and Brahmins, and all living beings with gods and humans, may I set in motion in this very Varanasi, in the Deer Park, the Wheel of Dharma, which has not been set in motion by any recluse, Brahman, God, Mara, or anyone in the world together with the Dharma. And may I teach the Dharma that is complete in every aspect, just as the Bhagavan Kashyapa does now. And thus, may gods and humans regard it as worth listening to and worth believing, just as they do for the Bhagavan Kashyapa now. May I become for the benefit and happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world, for the good, benefit, and happiness of gods and humans. May the demon ranks diminish, and divine ranks flourish. Then, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa, 
recognizing such thoughts and deliberations in the mind of Jayotipala the bhikshu, summoned another bhikshu, saying, Go, bhikshu, to where Jayotipala the bhikshu is and say to him, The teacher summons you, venerable sir. Approach where the Tathagata is. Following the instructions, the bhikshu approached Jayotipala the bhikshu and said, The teacher summons you, venerable Jayotipala. Approach where the Bhagavan is. Very well, venerable sir. Replied venerable Jayotipala, after hearing the bhikshu. He then approached where the Bhagavan Kashyapa was, venerated his feet with his head, and sat down to one side. Seated alone, the Bhagavan Kashyapa addressed the venerable Jayotipala, the monk, saying, Surely, Jayotipala, such profound thoughts arose in your mind while you were alone and withdrawn, oh, may I in the future journey become a Tathagata, an Arhat, a fully awakened one, endowed with wisdom and conduct, well gone, a knower of the worlds, unsurpassed, a tamer of persons to be tamed, a teacher of gods and humans. May I also recognize this world and other worlds, including the world of gods, and may I turn the triple turning, twelve-spoked wheel of Dharma in Varanasi, in the deer park, that has not been turned by any other recluse, Brahman, God, Mara, or anyone else along with the Dharma. And may I teach the Dharma that is complete in every aspect, just as the Bhagavan Kashyapa does now. And may I fully care for the whole community of monks, just as the Bhagavan Kashyapa currently does. And may gods and humans regard what I teach as worthy of hearing and believing, just as they do now with the Bhagavan Kashyapa. May I become for the benefit and happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world, for the great benefit and happiness of gods and humans. May the ranks of demons diminish, and the divine ranks flourish. Having said this, Ananda, the monk Jayotipala responded to the Bhagavan Kashyapa, saying, So be it, Bhagavan. Then the Bhagavan Kashyapa further addressed Jayotipala, the monk. Therefore, Jayotipala, offer this golden seat and pair of sandals before the Buddha and the community of monks. Those who have performed meritorious deeds, both gods and humans, will regard it as worthy of hearing and believing. Venerable Jayotipala then offered the golden seat and the pair of sandals before the Buddha and the community of monks. Following this, Ananda, the Bhagavan Kashyapa smiled and declared to Jayotipala, the monk. You will become, Jayotipala, in a future life, a Tathagata, an Arhat, a fully awakened one, endowed with wisdom and conduct, well gone, a knower of the worlds, unsurpassed, a tamer of persons to be tamed, a teacher of gods and humans. You will recognize this world and other worlds, and here in Varanasi, in the Deer Park, you will turn the triple turning, twelve-spoked wheel of Dharma that has never been turned by any other recluse, Brahman, God, Mara, or anyone else with the Dharma. And you will teach the Dharma that is complete in every aspect, just as the Bhagavan Kashyapa does now. You will also fully care for the whole community of monks, just as the Bhagavan Kashyapa currently does. And gods and humans will regard what you teach as worthy of hearing and believing, just as they do now with the Bhagavan Kashyapa. You will be for the benefit and happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world, for the great benefit and happiness of gods and humans. The ranks of demons will diminish, and the divine ranks will flourish. Then, indeed, Ananda, after Bhagavan Kashyapa had declared Jayotipala's future, the gods on earth raised the same proclamation. Hearing this proclamation of the earth gods, the gods of the four great kings, the thirty-three gods, the Yama gods, the Tushita gods, the Nirmanarati gods, and the Paranirmitavashavartan gods also declared, and until that moment, even the gods of the Brahma's retinue raised the same proclamation. Then, Ananda, after the proclamation had faded, Bhagavan Kashyapa instructed the monks with teachings of the Dharma, inspiring, uplifting, and delighting them. He said, Think this way, bhikshus, not that way, direct your minds this way, not that way. Dwell as islands unto yourselves, bhikshus, with no other refuge, rely on yourselves, rely on the Dharma, with no other refuge. Afterward, Bhagavan Kashyapa, radiant with a luminous body, ascended a palm tree through supernatural means to continue instructing, inspiring, uplifting, and delighting the monks. Thus should you think, bhikshus, thus should you not, thus should you direct your minds, thus should you not. 
dwell as islands unto yourselves, as refuges unto yourselves without any other refuge, rely on the Dharma as your island, as your refuge with no other. Then, Ananda, Bhagavan Kashyapa ascended from one palm tree to two, from two to three, and so forth, up to seven palm trees. At each level, he continued to instruct and uplift the monks. Finally, from the seventh palm tree, Bhagavan Kashyapa descended back down the trees, from six to five, four, three, two, and then to one, until he was seated again in his own seat. From there, he again instructed and uplifted the monks. Thus should you think, bhikshus, thus should you not, thus should you direct your minds, thus should you not. Dwell as islands unto yourselves, as refuges unto yourselves without any other refuge, rely on the Dharma as your island, as your refuge with no other. Then, Ananda, Bhagavan Kashyapa, breaking his sitting position, addressed the monks. I break this sitting after ensuring that the minds of these seven thousand monks, seated here, are liberated from the influxes without grasping. Jayotipala the monk has also been declared by me for supreme, perfect enlightenment. It may happen, Ananda, that at another time, in another era, there was a monk named Jayotipala. It should not be seen in that way. I was that monk named Jayotipala at that time, in that era. Bhagavan spoke thus, and Venerable Ananda, joyfully received the words, as did those seven thousand monks who rejoiced in what the Bhagavan had spoken.